Five Toy eventually got his man in a motel outside Brussels airport. After a four-year pursuit, Pele put pen to a sheet of hotel notepaper to become the highest paid athlete on the planet. When the world's greatest footballer touched down in New York in 1975, the team he joined was a rabble of students and semi-professionals playing on dirt fields littered with shards of glass. By the time the New York Cosmos won the 1977 Soccer Bowl, in Brazil forward Pelé's last competitive game, they boasted World Cup winners and record crowds, partied with celebrities and lunch with presidents. Backed by media mogul Steve Ross's Warner Communications, owners of Warner Brothers and Atlantic Records, the Galacticos in the Big Apple were treated like rock stars and behaved like them too. It was a champagne era that saw the franchise, like American soccer, go from boom to bust within a decade. The Cosmos, as one former PR guru put it, were one huge aphrodisiac. Now, a new chapter in their story is about to begin. Short presentational grey line it was always going to take something special to bring the North American Soccer League NASL, into the spotlight. Viewing figures were so bad after its debut 1967 season that CBS cancelled its TV deal. The Cosmos, founded in 1970, were far from a household name. Their most significant media exposure was when goalkeeper Shep Messing posed naked in Viva magazine. The state of soccer in the US in the 1960s and 70s was quite pathetic, Toy, former general manager at the Cosmos, told the BBC World Service in 2015. No one was interested and no one knew what soccer was. The only player in the entire universe average Americans had heard of was the fella in Brazil.